Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Galactic vs. video. We've got a fun one today because we will be looking at whether the UNSC Infinity could have changed the tide of the Battle of Reach. Could that one ship and its complement of Spartans have stopped the planet from falling? That's what we'll be discussing today. However, before we get into today's video, I do have a channel update which I want to discuss with you guys. I've put timestamps down below so you can skip ahead. If you're interested, this shouldn't take more than a minute. But basically, I've been sort of unhappy with the content on the channel for at least the past year and I think this is a problem that has been going back a bit longer maybe since the beginning of the Mandalorian. I've been moving away from what a lot of you guys subscribed for which was my lore video, my galactic versus videos, my starship versus etc and I've been focusing more on news and reaction videos. Now while those types of videos will always have some sort of place on the channel I do think things have tipped a bit too far in that direction. So I do want to start making more of these long form videos which I think are more unique on YouTube but which do take more research, they take a lot more time, and they're harder to do. So there's this sort of trade-off. I want to do more of these type of videos, but that does translate to less uploads a week. Now, eventually, I do want to get an editor, and maybe I can get seven days of uploads with a bunch of these videos and some reaction and news videos sort of complementing them. But for now, I really want to focus on going back to the channel's roots, and I hope you guys are on board for that. I look forward to reading all of your thoughts on this, and of course, the video itself down in the comments. With that being said, let's get into the discussion, and the rules for this video are pretty simple. Can the UNSC Infinity as it existed, let's say at the beginning of Halo 4, with its full complement of Spartan 4s, help turn the tide at the Battle of Reach? Here's how I'm going to schedule this video. The first bit will be discussing the UNSC Infinity, then I'm going to go into a full breakdown of the Battle of Reach, then at the end I'm going to give my thoughts on how things would have went down had the UNSC Infinity been present. Alright, so let's talk about the UNSC Infinity. By far humanity's strongest warship, perhaps by an order of magnitude if not more. The Infinity was the product of humanity's post-war research into Forerunner and Covenant technologies. It was originally envisioned as a lifeboat for humanity should Earth itself fall, but construction wasn't finished until the end of the Human Covenant War when it was converted into a full science, exploration, and warship. The forerunner technology made a huge difference. The UNSC Infinity, for example, was the first human ship to possess any sort of energy shielding, and its slip space drive would have been several orders of magnitude faster and more precise than anything else that humans had available. I've covered the specifics of why the Infinity was so great in a video I'll link down in the description. Just some further reading if you're interested, but let's look at the ship on a high level perspective. The Infinity was nearly 6 kilometers long, and alongside its energy shielding was protected by 490 centimeters of titanium. Titanium A3 armor plating. I mean, the ship was so durable that it rammed a Covenant RCS class Corvette without even losing shields or showing any concern whatsoever. Offensively, the UNSC Infinity was also a beast. It possessed four Series 8 Mac cannons. The vast, vast majority of UNSC ships were outfitted with only one much less powerful cannon with the Series 8 perhaps surpassing even the power of an orbital Mach platform as we see during the Battle of Earth as it pierced the mantle's approach. Additionally, the ship was bristling with traditional UNSC armament, including Archer missile pods, high explosive point defense weapons, and as we see during Halo 4, even a series of smaller turreted Machs. The UNSC Infinity also came with its own complement of escort ships, possessing 10 Strident class heavy frigates, at least during the time period that we're discussing, which it could launch at will from storage bays. However, the Infinity was not only useful in a space battle, but could also fully support ground engagements. The UNSC Infinity possessed hundreds if not thousands of ground vehicles, several thousand marines and ODST troopers, and additionally several hundred Spartans. So yeah, we're talking a lot of firepower here, but is it enough to save the planet Reach? Well, let's take a look at the events of the fall of Reach, and we'll start off with a brief chronology and summary of what happened. Now, this is somewhat difficult because there are really two main sources of lore when it comes to the Fall of Reach. First off, we have the Halo novels. Primarily, that's the Fall of Reach and First Strike. Secondly, we also have the Halo Reach video game. Unfortunately, these stories don't really jive very well together. The Halo Reach video game tells a much different story, so where possible, I've tried to look at them cohesively and present one unified series of events. That being said, I do believe that the events as they're presented in the novels do make more sense 
not just from a Halo lore perspective, but just logically so. If there's any discrepancy, I'm going to fall back on them. The fall of Reach was precipitated through a strike launched by the Covenant Fleet of Valiant Prudence. The Fleet of Valiant Prudence was made up of a massive CSO class Covenant supercarrier, several Covenant corvettes, and other ships. It somehow managed to sneak through Reach's defensive array, set up a stealth landing zone, and disgorge troops. The Strike Force's goal was both to recover any Forerunner assets planet side before glassing began and to soften Reach for an eventual military invasion. At the Battle of Zerdok Ridge, the UNSC managed to neutralize the Covenant's stealth capabilities, but although this may have been a tactical victory, this opened the planet up for full attack. With the CSO now in play and somehow out of range of the orbital defense platforms, both the UNSC and the Covenant sought reinforcements. Although Reach was the most important UNSC colony and 60% of the total fleet was diverted to Reach, by the time of major space engagements, the UNSC was still outnumbered 3 to 1. Even with the orbital defense platforms, those were not favorable odds, as the UNSC typically needed to have a 4 to 1 numerical advantage to have any sort of chance against a Covenant fleet. It also seems very likely that as the battle progressed, Rest, more Covenant fleets were continually reinforcing the present armada and that more ships were held in reserve should they be needed. The UNSC's defensive reach was based on the orbital defense platforms. Basically, keep them alive and they can rip through any Covenant ship at range. Thus, the Covenant's main attack was focused on piercing a hole through the planetary defense network, which could then be used to land ships. The largest and most definitive space engagement of reach was based on these weapon platforms. It saw the Covenant make one large full-scale strike at the ODPs with the UNSC attempting to stand their ground, even sacrificing several repair ships and the lives on board attempting to protect UNSC assets. Here's a brief excerpt from the fall of Reach. 20,000 clicks are on the planet, a cluster of 100 UNSC ships collected at Rally Point Zulu. Destroyers, frigates, three cruisers, two carriers, three refit and repair stations hovering over them, waiting to be used as sacrificial shields. 52 additional UNSC warships inbound to Rally Point Zulu, Cortana reported. The scene blinked and transferred to the approaching Covenant fleet. There were so many ships, Keys couldn't estimate their numbers. How many? He asked. I count 314 Covenant ships, Captain Cortana replied. So yeah, not good numbers, and the only reason reason I highlight this section specifically because it really, really points out how disadvantaged the UNSC was here. What would basically happen is the Covenant would take one run at the UNSC, then retreat out of range of the weapons platforms. The Covenant fleet was devastated both by orbital weapons platform fire and nuclear mines, but the UNSC lost 80% of their forces and five orbital weapons platforms. The problem was these weren't five random platforms, these were five specifically targeted by the Covenant and a hole was now open the defensive grid to allow not only drop ships to land on reach, but even several cruisers to make their way down to the planet's surface. At this point, the Covenant only had one purpose with their engagement. Well, two if we count the further recovering of Forerunner artifacts, but their primary goal was destroying the ground-based generators for the orbital defense platforms, which was now the only thing that was preventing the full-on glassing of reach. But even still, this was most likely not a tactical necessity. Had the Covenant truly needed to, with the UNSC fleet decimated, they could have destroyed the remaining platforms in space, but they would have taken losses. Even with several Spartan teams deployed to the ground, by this point, Reach really had no chance. Hundreds of thousands of Covenant soldiers were being deployed to the ground, and even generators with several Spartan teams protecting it were being overwhelmed. Before Fred and the other Spartans under his command even lost their generator, they realized that Reach was essentially dead. The Covenant capital ships that burst through the net were also beginning glassing operations on the ground, and they just an unstoppable wave of soldiers. Reach was the case where more than any other planet, I would argue, the Covenant brought their entire might to bear. And crushing resistance, I mean, they were throwing away capital ships en masse, which outgunned any single UNSC battle group. 
and even still it was never really in question. And that brings us to the point of our actual analysis. Could the UNSC Infinity have changed things for humanity? I don't think so. I think as it stood, humanity had maybe a 1 or 2% chance of protecting Reach. With the UNSC Infinity, her strident frigate escort fleet, and her onboard soldiers and other resources, I think the likelihood of surviving does jump, but probably still only to maybe 5%. The great thing about the UNSC Infinity is that it's basically a mobile orbital defense platform, so the UNSC could have used it to disrupt some of the Covenant's tactics. I think, for example, both that one major space offensive that the Covenant led against the weapon platforms. I don't think you want the Infinity in the mix of things because it will be targeted and under the firepower of several hundred Covenant ships, it is going to go down. It's not invulnerable. Where it would probably be best used is leading a pursuit of the remaining Covenant vessels and trying to pick some off as they approach the hole in the orbital weapons net. But the problem is it's still Still just one ship. And while I do think it will be impactful, ultimately it will probably just change the Covenant's tactics rather than actually forcing them to full on retreat, which almost never happens. The Infinity is powerful, but it just can't outgun a hundred Covenant vessels, even with its support ships and the remains of the UNSC fleet. It just can't. We're talking Covenant cruisers, carriers, special ships. We hear about Covenant snipers in the fleet. I think maybe if the Infinity exists, the Covenant try to engage it outside of weapons range, or they try to take it out when they're heading for the planet itself. I also think that the numbers on the ground are just way too slanted for even a thousand Spartan 4s to make a difference, much less the five to 300 that were actually on the Infinity. The Covenant had air support, they were losing tens of thousands of soldiers and moving on like nothing happened, they had a horde of elites, grunts and jackals. I just don't think you can stop that kind of firepower, especially when the capital ships themselves are still at play. There's also the problem that the UNSC Infinity is only one ship and it can't protect the entire defense grid at once if it's in space. The Covenant can use their micro slip space jumps and take out other ODPs away from the Infinity. It's not going to be pretty, but this is basically the most important UNSC military target outside of Earth, perhaps even including Earth when you think about the military capacity and capability of Reach. The problem for the UNSC Infinity at this point is we're basically asking could it have helped humanity win the war, conventionally at least, and the answer is just no. The Covenant wanted this planet dead, and compared to humanity, they had essentially endless resources to do so. One UNSC Infinity just won't be enough to change the tide. How many UNSC Infinities would you need? Honestly, probably 7 to 10. I think you need that many to sit aside the UNSC fleet to push away the Covenant onslaught against the ODP grid. I think that's the only way you can win, preserving the space defenses. That many ships also means the Covenant can't split you up as easily. You can put one in atmosphere to provide ground support if you need to. Although ships that large will struggle in atmosphere, they can at least provide resources, I mean. I do think their shielding would be a big factor. The Covenant basically relied on the fact that with one sort of big attack in Plasma Salvo, that they could really weaken Reach's defenses. The shields provide a lot more cushion, but one is just not going to do it in my opinion. But guys, that's all my video. My baby's getting restless, so I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know if you have any thoughts or comments down below. Let me know what you thought of my little announcement at the beginning of the video. But until next time, guys, thanks for watching, and may the force be with you.